Hey guys, I'm back with another video and so today I have the next phase of fall candles. So basically a candle haul from the most recent $15.95 candle sale. Uh, this includes the open sky stuff as well as that bandana collection with like harvest pomegranate and stuff. Uh, technically what we had previous or right now is the last summer or fall floor set but there was a fall preview with that and this, this is technically fall one and then the stuff that comes after is fall two but for us it's basically the second phase of fall candles and that's basically what we have going here today. Um, uh, but then before that, I do uh, want to talk about the new uh, signature fragrance that's coming out for the holiday season called Pure Wonder. Uh, I had the opportunity to test that out, so I'm kind of excited to share my thoughts on it. It's also on a tester strip, so I'll talk about that as well. Uh, so yeah, I believe the new fragrance, kind of like You're the One or Be Joyful or In the Stars, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff, Magic in the Air, uh, the new holiday signature fragrance is going to be Pure Wonder, and stores were sent a sample, like a small little candle sample and like a perfume fume sample of it um, in a little box and uh, maybe or maybe not they can share it with their uh, customers but I had the opportunity to smell it so I wanted to sort of pass that on. Uh, if you recall Pure Wonder was actually a fragrance that tested in the Atlanta test stores during like the September 2020 time frame and there was a color run of uh, basically fine fragrance mist that they were testing and a lot of them seemed very interesting and I guess Pure Wonder either did the best or this is the one they just like decided to go with um, and I think it says lose yourself in a blissful daydream with the enchanting scent of pure wonder and the fragrance notes say radiant raspberry midnight jasmine and golden amber uh, apparently i believe she was saying that it was the same perfumers as the person who did twilight woods and forever red and when i smelled it i immediately thought of forever red and in the stars so yes so basically what does it smell like um it's quite strong even on the uh tester paper uh but basically what i get from it is a mix of in stars and for our red like that was the first thing that came to mind it's like that sort of velvety fruitiness like a more of like a darker fruity floral is what i get from it but there's still a sparkling component that you get from in the stars that it really smells like forever red and in the stars it's very quintessential bbw more mature high-end like department store smelling perfume is what i get from it very quintessential bbw holiday fragrance you get a velvety darker fruit uh, I guess this has a raspberry in there, but it smells very similar to like the blend that's in Forever Red. There's like a velvety darkness to it and a little bit of a sweetness in there. But then you get like a slightly uh, perfumey, powdery, floral, peppery blend that is very similar to In the Stars. It, like the dry down is uh, like very, very similar to In the Stars. Uh, this was the Star Flower, Sandalwood Musk, Sugar Tangelo, White Agar Wood, and Radiant Amber. Um, yeah. Whoa, it has like the same peppery, uh, woodsy dry down that In The Star has and even the, even the dry down, even the regular fragrance, non-dry down smells like sort of woodsy or peppery in that. And this is very similar to that. I think it was a little bit sweeter when she first sprayed it, but the dry down is very similar to dry down of In The Stars. So if you like those type of Forever Red plus In The Stars fragrance, this is pretty much what Pure Wonder smells like. Um, I think I'll probably, I, I like collecting the uh, holiday fragrances. So uh, judging by this, I do enjoy it. It's very in line with all their other holiday fragrances that I will most certainly pick up the candle if it comes out. Um, and I'll probably try the shower gel as well. So if you like Forever Red or In the Stars or even I guess Twilight Woods, it's like a woodsy but sort of fruity floral all at the same time, then I think you'll enjoy that. Um, and that's my little bit about Pure Wonder. Uh, now going into the candles. So yes, it was $15.95. I had a 20% off coupon from the mailer. Um, and the one I was most excited for was the Open Sky Fragrance, which is also a new signature collection of fragrance that's coming out as well. Um, and that is what that looks like. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of the packaging. I think this is one of the more unattractive uh, luminary wraparounds, but it is what it is. It has a gold uh, hammered lid on it. Um, this is just very similar to the same luminary pattern that we had for Palo Santo and Fiji White Sands, um, and it just doesn't really give me open sky vibes on it. I don't know, for like a signature fragrance collection, I kind of was hoping for something a little bit more pretty or standard, like, you know, something pretty, pretty like that, you know? Uh, I was hoping for something like that, but it's not quite that, but whatever. Um, so yes, this one says fresh air while blackberry, soft violet, and a cloud of comforting vanilla. This one is the 2550 price point, as you can see uh, down there. Uh, so yes, I already burned this one once, um, and I could smell it plenty strong, so we're good on that. It's not like honey wildflower, where it's like totally unscented, um, and it was a very fast and vicious burn. So look at those like mushroom tops that are already forming on there. Yeah, this, um, I was a little bit more excited about it before I smelled it, but now that I smelled it, it's a, there's a little bit of a weirdness to it. It kind of smells like mothballs, um, but in any case, 
What does it smell like? You get a juicy berry in there. It's not as sweet as some of their other more bursting juicy berries that you would get in like a summer fragrance. Uh, but there's like a velvety uh, fruit in there that's mixed with that vanilla. Uh, so you do get that berry in there. There's a bit of a uh, powdery floral component to it that does kind of evoke violet, but I don't think it's as sweet or bright as violet is. Like if you've smelled violet before, it's like a very like distinctly, uh, it has like a bright sweetness to it. It's like a quintessentially like sweet, like a flower type of sweet floral fragrance. What comes to mind is the violet that's in here. Uh, this one, the violet, uh, while similar, yeah, this one's just so much more vibrant and powdery and uh, just a little bit, I guess, sweeter, like a, just a sweeter floral is what I get from it. I really enjoyed this though. Uh, I actually kind of dig this more than I do the open sky. Uh, but I, it, so there is a little bit of violet in there that gives it like a slight sweet floral component to it, but I get something that's more similar to like mums. Like there's a very like uh, dark, dry, like fall floral is what I get from it. That's very similar to the Bright Autumn Blooms fragrance that we have here. And this is Marigold Petals, Cedar Leaf, uh, Bergamot, and Sandalwood. Um, but this had like a more of a fall floral, like marigold mums mixed with a sandalwood vibe to it. Uh, it's kind of similar to this. There is a distinctly like more dry fall floral mixed with some type of sandalwood in there. Um, and it's more like a sandalwood vanilla rather than like a sweet uh, marshmallow vanilla. It's a little bit more of like a sophisticated vanilla for the the cloud of comforting vanilla. Yeah, it's more like a sophisticated vanilla rather than a edible vanilla. So don't think it's like a marshmallow vanilla or anything like that. But there is a something with the vanilla. I think it's like a sandalwood fragrance that gives it sort of like a mothballs kind of vibe to it. It reminds me of the sandalwood that's in Wild Madagascar vanilla as well, which is kind of quite harsh and strong. There's almost like a pungent quality to it. Uh, I get a similar sandalwood to Wild Madagascar Vanilla. Um, it gives it that distinctly mature vibe that you get from like Japanese Cherry Blossom or even like Moonlight Path. There's a distinctly mature quality to it that kind of smells like vanilla mothballs that is kind of throwing me off on it. Uh, but it's not bad. I think it gives it more of a a cozy fall feel, whereas if you just read blackberries, violet, and vanilla, that could be very much a spring fragrance, but I think they're emitting notes here to make it seem a little bit more palatable. I feel like there's like some kind of more dry uh, fall floral in the route of like mums, and I feel like it's more like a vanilla sandalwood rather than just a cloud of comforting vanilla. I think they're trying to like sweetsy or cutesy it up just to make it a little bit more palatable but I think there's more going on here than the notes would indicate. Uh, comparing it to other fragrances, it is not the Candied Violet Sorbet or whatever that we had from the uh, SAS time. That was just a little bit more flat. It wasn't as like uh, cozy, warm as Open Sky is. It wasn't quite as woodsy as, as well. It was very one dimensional, like a flat, just plain floral fragrance. It was actually quite underwhelming when I sprayed it and uh, smelled the shower gel in the store. I didn't actually even pick that one up, so I don't think it is at all that. We also have Violet Plum from before, and this was Soft Violet Pet Petals with Plum and Sheer Woods. Um, and this, I believe, was pretty much just Sweet Cranberry Rose. Uh, uh, kind of similar in a fall floral vibe, but the plum is a lot more juicy and present in this, and it doesn't have the mothballs fragrance that the Open Sky has. Uh, kind of similar to Dahlia in the way that it's like a cozy fall floral type of fragrance to it. I think this one has that pear in there that makes it just totally different from Open Sky. Um, a similar like floral fall quality to it, but uh, the fruit note is different in this. Uh, but yeah, um, kind of like a like secret wonderland type of berry feel to it, but I think that was even a little bit more juicy or sweet, uh, whereas this still has those heavier uh, like sandalwood vanilla type of uh, like just darkerness to it. Um, yeah, so it's probably enough to be said about Open Sky. Um, it's decent. It's like a BBW body care fragrance. Like think of like one of their like purple fragrances is what really comes to mind when I smell this. Uh, the packaging is kind of throwing me off, but I didn't mind it. Uh, I don't think it's totally uh, uh, duplicate either. So I enjoyed that. It was strong and I could smell it. So that was Open Sky. And that's what that was right here. Um, this I pulled out because it's kind of similar to Magic in the Air a, a little bit, but not really. Uh, I guess just has that same uh, like powdery 
uh, like sandalwood vanilla component is kind of similar in Magic in the Air, but not exactly the same. Uh, so that was that right there. Uh, let's see, moving on, there is the uh, bandana collection of fall fragrances. And the first one we have is Harvest Pomegranate in the three wick version. There's a single wick version of this out as well. This also has the gold hammered lids. Uh, this says, this is $25.50. It's a rich pomegranate, freshly picked apples and sleep, sweet black plums. I smell this in the single wick and it kind of just smelled like a plain old like juicy sweet like berry pomegranate fragrance and I wasn't too uh, impressed with it. There was nothing really harvest about it. Uh, it could come out in the summer or spring and I would have been fine with it. Uh, but after having smelled the candle and actually I have burned it once already, um, the apple is so much stronger on the three wick. Uh, maybe I just need to smell the single wick again, but the, the three wick one, the apple is first and foremost. Like this could, this should be harvest apple instead of harvest pomegranate, but I think pomegranate is a little bit more exotic, so that's why they do that. Uh, but this is just balls to the walls apple fragrance, like wow. Um, and then the pomegranate honestly comes off a little bit like tart, uh, like a cranberry fragrance. And so it really kind of smells like a cranberry apple fragrance. And then I was like, oh my gosh, wasn't there an iced cran apple fragrance before? And there sure was. So iced cran apple came out. It was in like little like cut out like knit sweater square label with a cutout of it uh and that was ice cran apple and then there was ice cran apple that came out in like one of those uh like metallic holographic wraparound white barn core labels um and i don't have that in my collection anymore i had it once and i was just all right with it but very similar to ice cran apple if anybody has ice cran apple i would be very uh, intrigued to see how they compare I feel like maybe Ice Cran Apple had a little bit more of that like moldy apple that you get from Gingham Apple, uh, Farm Stain Apple, American Apple, Heirloom Apple, Honeycrisp Apple. I feel like that sort of moldy, dewy, uh, like fresh apple note was stronger in Ice Cran Apple than it was in Harvest Pomegranate. This seems a little bit even sweeter and way juicier than maybe even Ice Cran Apple or any of those other Farm Stain Apple varieties. Uh, but you get a very juicy, juicy, uh, red apple is pretty much what I get from it mixed with a even sweeter like cranberry like I guess pomegranate fragrance and then it says sweet black plums um, it's a very sweet plum if it is um, and it just gives it this very like like an apple drink apple punch apple cranberry punch type of ice cran apple feel is what I get from it I was actually quite strong though so there was that um, the apple is so strong in this that I think it still does lean a little bit more into late summer or fall than like a summertime fragrance. Uh, that it's kind of like I just had a really, really, really strong, super sweet, juicy apple fragrance is what basically Harvest Pomegranate smell like. Um, it does kind of remind me of the original heirloom apple that we had in this metallic collection and that's what that was. Um, and this one was red Cortland apple, creamy sandwood, and marshmallow. Um, this is not to be confused with all the other heirloom apples that came out after it. The original heirloom apple in this version was a different fragrance from all the other heirloom apples that came out after it, including like the Honeycrisp apple and the Farm Sand apple and all that. It's just that same usual moldy apple fragrance. Uh, this is different from that. Uh, I can't make that clear enough because Oh my God, I love this one. This one has a juicy velvety pear in there. It's like just this ripe, juicy velvety pear mixed with that similar apple that's in Harvest Pomegranate uh, mixed with a marshmallow note that has like a sweet vanilla feel to it. It's just like ooey gooey and delicious. Um, if, it, if it was called like apple vanilla marshmallow, I would be totally on board with it. It's so sweet and juicy, like just a beautiful sweet velvety pear apple and marshmallow vanilla. Um, similar sweetness quality of that apple to this where it like doesn't have that moldy fresh pig dewy vibe that the farm stain apple honey crisp apple has it has that same very very sweet juicy syrupy apple is present in both heirloom apple and harvest pomegranate so two similar fragrances i think this one's a little bit more tart a little bit more cranberry and a little bit more like ice cream apple than heirloom apple is but if you just want a really really sweet juicy pleasant apple then i think harvest pomegranate is that for you uh, the next one we have is Dark Blue Night, and that's what that looks like. And it is a wraparound. Uh, this one says Crisp Mountain Air, Fresh Lavender, and a Touch of Musk. And I did already burn this one as well. Uh, this one on cold, I was getting a lot of like flannel mixed with like a cotton laundry fragrance. So think of like maybe if you went on a date with the guy who smells like the flannel candle or wears whatever the flannel cologne is um, and he went over to his place and he was doing laundry, you kind of smell like the flannel fragrance mixed with laundry in the background. 
or let's say for some reason you spent the night and then the next morning you had to like you know wash the sheets or he had to wash the sheets at his uh, house and you smelled the flannel on him but you also smelled the sheets being washed in the background in the laundry room that's kind of what I got from the cold sniff impression of dark blue night um, and I kind of been jonesing for flannel because I don't have any flannel in my collection anymore but I'm just like I've had it before that I, you know if I spring for a cologne scent I kind of want something new and so dark blue night was kind of the opportunity for that uh, so yeah but when I was burning it I feel like the cotton fragrance wasn't so apparent it still had a very similar fragrance profile to flannel where it's more of that like juicy drippy almost like a sweet cologne that I liked where it has like a sweeter variety to it um, there's still a little bit of sharpness to it but it's not as like intense or like headache inducing as mahogany teakwood it's a little bit more sweeter and palatable in my opinion like flannel is um, and that's what I got from it there's a bit of like a sharp woodsiness to it that I guess comes from the lavender and the crisp mountain air so to speak I feel like there is a slight like piney or woodsy component to it that I get in there, which I guess is the crisp mountain air. So there is like a, I don't know if I can go all the way to pine, but there is a woodsy, slightly pine evoking fragrance mixed with lavender. It also does remind me of these sort of sweet aquatic notes that you get from, uh, what is it? Bowhouse Row. So if you like flannel or Bowhouse Row, I think you'll enjoy this one. Um, I don't think it's quite as aquatic as Bowhouse Row. There's a little bit more of a woodsy, sharp, crispness that I get um, and I didn't get so much of that sort of cottony laundry fragrance as I was getting on cold when I was burning it but it was still nice I could still smell it it was plenty strong in the bedroom that I had it going in uh, that it, it was nice so that was dark blue night right there if you're just jonesing for like a flannel or a bullhouse row type of fragrance uh, then dark blue night is that um, I think everything else all up in those collections is repackaged let me check uh, so other ones in that bandana collection include Pumpkin Pecan Waffles, Fireside, Dark Blue Night, which I talked about, uh, Harvest Pomegranate, Autumn Adventure, which is citrus, cedarwood, and mint. That one was kind of boring. That was another like lighter citrus based uh, cologne fragrance. It was just very light and underwhelming that I really didn't feel like I needed to pick it up. Um, and I think that's it for that collection. Uh, there was the other collection uh, there as well that had like the, the sort of landscape labels of the sweater weather, uh, Perfect Autumn, Harvest Gathering, Fresh Fall Morning and Fall Farmhouse. Those are all repackages, so I didn't need any of those. Uh, Harvest Gathering, if you haven't smelled it before, is like a berry and apple blend, I believe, uh, with a little bit of spices, very like potpourri, typical fall fragrance, uh, like a fall spice fragrance, kind of like leaves, but less cinnamony and spicy or intense as leaves is, but that was what that is. Um, and I think everything else is repackaged. Uh, so yeah, not a lot of newness coming. They are doing still a ton of repackaging, so that's not so super uh, exciting, but it is what it is. So those were the three basically new candles that I picked up from the next phase of fall. Uh, last thing that I picked up was uh, they still had some 50% off uh, SAS stragglers and I love this candle and I finished my uh the original one i had two of those and i finished the last one of that so then uh, i was like you know why wouldn't mind having another one and that is indeed salted pretzel milkshake friggin love this one. Oh my gosh this is creamy vanilla ice cream salty pretzel bits and gooey chocolate drizzle just talked about this in my previous like rundown video Oh my God, you get that hard, crispy uh, pretzel in there with the salt crystals mixed with a creamy vanilla ice cream fragrance with heaps of a salted caramel and then just a hint of chocolate in there. It really does smell like a salted pretzel milkshake and I love it. It's very much like in the realm of summer boardwalk carnival type of fragrance. That's once again, perfect for summer into fall. So I was like, you know what? I'm actually a little bit more jazzed about this than all the other fall stuff. So that was salted pretzel milkshake right there. And whoo, I think that is it. I feel like I rambled my head off for just four candles and pure wonder, but it is what it is. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you're interested in any of these new candles that are coming out for the next floor set. Um, I am more excited for the fall two old fashioned cider donut. Sign me up for that. I'm hoping it's similar to the old cider donut, but with improved performance. There's also a caramel brulee latte, which that could potentially just be pumpkin caramel latte slash maple cinnamon pancake. So I don't know how that's going to turn out. Um, I think pumpkin snickerdoodle is coming back out. I really didn't care for that last year, but it's coming back out. But the old fashioned cider donut and I think pumpkin cinnamon bun 
uh, are the intriguing ones. Pumpkin, pumpkin cinnamon bone was a fragrance that was out before, uh, but the versions that I had always smelled like greasy, old, like like old, like old fried chicken grease. Oh my God, it would just be so nasty and greasy smelling. I don't know what went wrong there. Just oily, like just, oh, uh, just, yeah, I don't know. So I'm hoping that one is improved or like been somehow tweaked. Uh, so we'll see about that. Um, I believe that is it. Uh, just as a side note, I am in the process of moving again because my lease is ending and I have decided uh, to move somewhere else. Uh, so I'm going to be packing everything up again and moving. So my filming and uploading schedule might be a little bit sporadic. So just a heads up on that. I kind of wanted to do like daily uploads just for like a comeback introductory period. But uh, the uploads will probably be a little less frequent uh, than they have been just because I have to pack and move everything up. And that is very time consuming and very uh just strenuous and just yeah there's a lot of like moving parts when it comes to moving and all like 500 of my candles have to get packed up again so i'm looking forward to that so yes so just a heads up on that uh i think that's pretty much it thanks so much for watching and i'll talk to you guys later bye